to join us. She is uh, Vanessa Pudicombe, and um, Vanessa is uh, presently, um, she is the owner of Sundura Spawn Academy since 2017. Uh, she purchased the nail room and changed the business name to Sundara and moved operations to its current location. Uh, they offer hand and foot therapies. The service menu has grown with the addition of beauty wellness services, as well as certification classes for those looking to pursue a career in aesthetics. That's coming soon, I guess. Mm -hmm. All services offered at Sundara are carried out using organic, gluten-free, and or vegan products with high performance standards and the ability to preserve the world that we live in. So, Vanessa... I have just, uh, is she on? Hi, can you hear Hi, me? Hi, Vanessa. I am here. <laughs> Welcome to our Women's Day event. And so thank I will now you. give you the floor and uh, thank you for coming today. To present. Thank you for having me. Actually, for stars, I just want to say your little flowers in the back are absolutely adorable. Love those. Thank you. Yes. We need to have some color and some brightness these days. It's been very yes. gloomy lately, so that's lovely. Um, so I guess first, thank you for having me. Uh, I'm glad to be a part of this. This is awesome. So I love this. So thank you. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, I am the owner of Sundara Spa, formerly known as The Nail Room. Um, though the business is new to a lot of people, given that it is newly moved to the main street in Penetang, it actually has been around since 2012. So. It was located at the Bayfield House Retirement Lodge here in town, and which is where I took over the business as well. But it was during the first lockdown of COVID that, you know, with all the changing restrictions and whatnot, you know, it was, it was brought upon us that we had to find a new home. So, you know, it wasn't perfect timing, but it is what it is. And, you know, I think everything happens for a reason. So we love our new home and I'm happy to be here. So, yeah. Um, so I guess I came on today, I've been asked to speak a little bit about foot care and the importance of it. Um, and I mean, the, the, the topic of foot care is so vast. And I mean, I could sit here all day long and talk to you about all kinds of nitty gritty things and really dive right in. But um, when I gave it some thought, I thought I would keep things very simple today. So what I thought I would do is speak to you all on things that we can do for ourselves at home um, to maintain the health of our feet in between professional services. So, I mean, a lot of people out there think going to have a foot, um, a foot service, be it a pedicure with, you know, a business such as my mine, or, you know, to go and see a foot doctor is something that you don't do all the time, you know, especially spa pedicures, let's call it. A lot of people look at those as something to do you know, for a special occasion or, you know, just in the summertime, you know, when our toes are sticking out of our sandals. But uh, it is super important to to focus on, the, you know, the health of our feet year round. You know, and in my profession, we always strongly suggest that people come to have their foot services done, you know, every four to six weeks. But, you know, at a minimum, even if you do it every four or I guess four times a year with the changing of the seasons, even that is really good as well. Um, you know, from our perspective of things, we can get in there and do a little bit more of a, of a thorough cleaning than we can do on ourselves at home. So, like I said, it's the things we can do at home for ourselves isn't a replacement, but it's definitely better than nothing. So, that said, things that we can do for ourselves, you know, from our home, since we are spending so much time there at the days. Uh, a lot of these are gonna come across as very common sense, very, very basic things. But um, to be perfectly honest, there's a lot of us that don't do them. So that's why I mentioned them today. And the first thing is cleanliness and washing. So again, this may seem very basic, but when we're in the bath, when we're in the shower, you know, whatnot, make sure that when you're washing your body and your hair, that you're not forgetting about your feet and your toes. And when I say that, get in there with the soap, you know, give them a good scrub, get between your toes, you know, make sure that you're, you're doing a very thorough job. And uh, if that's not something you feel mobily comfortable doing during your, your bathing, you know, even to fill up a nice warm, you know, 
basin of, of warm water at home, a little bit of Epsom salts, and just soak your feet while you're watching TV. Even that's, that's equally as good. Just make sure that you get in there and, again, same thing, you know, scrub your toes together or take a washcloth and just give them a really good thorough cleaning. Um, I guess the next thing after cleaning would become, you know, would be drying. And again, drying is actually super, super important as well because all bacteria, all things that can really start to give us issues with our feet tend to grow and thrive in damp, dark places. So, I mean, that is our feet in, its, in itself, especially between our toes. So when we're drying our feet, you know, make sure to really get the heels, get in between your toes, make sure they're really dry before putting on your clothing. And you just want to put a little bit of powder on there as well. You know, those things are really going to help you out in the long run, even if it seems like such a, you know, a tiny little thing to do at home. Hmm, let me see. What else can I do? Oh, yes. I made myself a cheat sheet. So if you see me looking down, that's what I'm doing so I don't forget here. Uh, so after washing and after drying, um, moisturizing. The moisturizing is huge and even more so now during the dry winter months. I mean, it's important year round, but especially, especially now. So all moisturizers are great. And I mean, you can absolutely use whatever you have at home for sure. But if I recommend anything, something that contains a thing called urea. And urea is, is something our body produces naturally. It's going to act as a natural exfoliant. And it's also going to help to lock in moisture. So we really want to keep the moisture that we have in our feet and not just put a lotion on that's going to sit on top of our skin and just sort of block whatever we have there, which is, I mean, it's fine and it's better than nothing, but we do really want to, you know, keep what we have. So moisturizing is super, super important. Um, let's see what else I've got here. Sounds kind of silly, maybe, because a lot of people out there I know hate this next one, but socks. There are so many people that do not like to wear socks at all, even in their shoes. But to have a proper pair of socks on all the time, whether you're at home, whether you're out and about, you know, with your shoes on, socks are really going to help to protect you again from the bacteria that I was talking about earlier. You know, our feet sweat and whatnot during the day. And if we tend to wear our footwear without socks on, we're just going to put that kind of, you know, stinky, sweaty bacteria into our shoes. And then every time we put them on, we're just going to be doing it again and again and again. So we want to kind of stay away from that because the cleaner our shoes are, the, you know, the drier our feet are, the more we're going to be able to maintain them, you know, and it really does come down to being that simple, clean, dry, <laughs> and well protected. Um, so yeah, socks are huge. Socks are very, very important. Um, that said too, sore shoes. And that's the next one on my list. I know we all tend to look at shoes when we go shoe shopping and, you know, go, ooh, those are really pretty and snag those up in the size we think fits us. Not always the case though. So we really do want to find a pair of shoes that's going to have proper uh, support, something that's going to um, um, fit our heel arch properly so that we're getting the proper support that we need while we walk. So we're not, you know, too flat, if that makes sense. Um, when I say flat, you know, I, I can't help but think of flip-flops in the summer, which are absolutely terrible for our feet. <laughs> but uh, something with a nice arch support. And then we also want to make sure that the shoes that we're wearing, excuse me, have um, enough space in the toe area as well. It's called the toe box of the shoe. And this is going to, it's going to allow our feet to breathe a little bit for our toes to move so we're not smushing them all into the same, you know, tiny little space while we walk. And this is more of a longevity thing, but it's going to keep us from having issues with our, with our metatarsals, which are our bones and our feet and our toes. You know, you'll start to notice as we age, our toes start to shift inwards a little bit. You know, we might be walking on our baby toes or our, the ones beside our baby toes. And that's because we're not wearing shoes that, that fit us properly. So um, proper footwear, absolutely. Let me see what else I have here. Don't trim your toenails too short. Yes. 
there's a lot of people that like their toenails to be as short as humanly possible. I get it, but this is not healthy at all. <laughs> and um, just to just to point out for us humans, all of us, just because of the way gravity works, it's humanly impossible to cut our toenails perfectly straight, which is what we're looking for. You know, as we're trying to lean down and clip them over the toilet bowl or whatever we're doing, bar none, you will never get them perfectly straight. <laughs> you know, you do want to leave a little bit of, of length on them, not too long, because you don't want them too long either. But um, when we cut our toenails too short, that can lead to to ingrown toenails, which are incredibly painful. It can lead to, you know, if you get those ingrown toenails, to infections, which we do not want at all. And um, just having a little bit of extra length on those toenails as well protects them in our shoes. So, you know, if we're walking or running or doing daily tasks, you know, there's a lot of friction and a lot of, you know, bumping going on inside of our footwear, and it just protects them a little bit. So we don't want to keep them too short because it'll It'll cause a lot of issues. We don't want that. Uh, let me see here. I'm just going back over my list. We did washing and drying and moisturizing. Uh, proper socks, proper footwear. Don't cut your toenails too short. In terms of home care, I think that pretty much covers it. I mean, I, like I said, I can keep going on and on. The little exercises we can do with our feet, uh, just using a regular tennis ball or something like that that we have at home. Um, that's going to help to stretch out those foot muscles and, and keep them working. But um, the, the little tidbits that I did list are, are important ones. Those, it, uh, it is super important, very, very important. And uh, yeah, I think, that's, I think that 